today I'm going to walk you through one of my favorite public courses out here in Malaysia. We have played out here in Seri Selangor before, but today I wanted to talk a little bit more about my game here as it's been a while and just kind of talk you guys through each hole. So we're starting off here with hole number one, and I always feel like this hole is a lot trickier than it seems to be. It's not a very long par 4, but it definitely has character. Nice! Go oh, ride that bird. <laughs> so you couldn't see it from the first clip, but the left side of this fairway has two bunkers guarding it, and the right side is actually blocked by these trees. But like you can see here, there is a tree stump in front of me, which has actually made my fairway twice as large because previously a lot of my tee shots ended up kicking towards the right as this fairway slopes from the left to the right and you would usually be blocked by one of those trees but as they have cut that tree down it has definitely made this tee shot a lot easier for me my second shot hit the green but as you can see I'm a bit past the pin this green is definitely not very easy to read in my opinion. There's quite a few slopes and from my experience, there has been days when this green is really fast and days when it is really slow. So especially since it's the first hole of the day, I always find this green a little bit harder to judge. I'm faced with a downhill putt about a 30 footer, but as you can tell there's still a lot of dew on the greens so I did not feel like it was going to be that quick because I felt like the water was going to cause the friction to slow down the ball a little bit but I might have been wrong as you can tell by this putt. I left myself with an uphill putt coming back which wasn't too bad. It was about a 5 footer so it's not ideal but not in a super bad position. However, I knew once I putted that, that I did not put it right because I just did not have a very good stroke on that. So a 3 jab on the first hole, not ideal, but we will move on from it. So the next hole is a pretty difficult one in my opinion. It's a good distance and the tee shot is pretty difficult because you do have to hit a cut. And if you hit a draw, there is a big chance that you're going to run out of fairway and go into those trees. However, the challenge here is that the further forward they actually put the tee box, the harder the hole becomes because those trees on the right side get closer and they are pretty high to be able to carry them. So the closer you are, the more bigger of a cut that you actually have to hit. So I actually prefer playing this hole from further back than further forward, even though it is a long hole. This hole, the fairway is all downhill and it always rolls out into the rough but I got a bit lucky here so I got a shot. So like I said, I got lucky with that result but honestly with this hole, as you could see I think in the previous clip, there is barely any grass around that area so it's so easy for you to run a fairway so you definitely do need a little bit of luck here unless obviously you're just a natural cutter of the ball then this hole will probably suit your eye better. I had 180 yards here playing 173 so I was between a 6 and a 5 iron but if you guys didn't know my 5 iron is actually a hybrid and I didn't want the ball to go up too quickly because there is still a little tree in front of me. So I decided to go with a punch 6 iron here. Also I knew that the front of the green here would definitely be a better place to miss it rather than over just because the chipping from the front of the green is way easier than from the back of the green. Now if you haven't played a course before, it would obviously be a little bit hard to be able to know which is the better place to miss it but I think you can kind of roughly tell. For instance if you know that a green is completely going uphill you know that from the back of the green, you're going to have a downhill chip, whereas from the front of the green, you're going to have an uphill chip. So if you didn't already know, this is why I always talk about course management and knowing where to place your ball because you're not always going to hit good shots but if you put yourself in good positions you're going to end up reducing those big numbers and sometimes those good positions could even be being short of a green so making sure that you have a good plan for each and every shot is going to definitely help you lower your scores similarly again on this hole I don't know if you could tell but I did not hit a very good tee shot there. 
but as you can see missing it on the left here I have given myself another uphill chip whereas if I miss it on the right I don't know if you can tell but there's a high chance you're either going to hit that severe slope on the right side which is going to give you about maybe even a 90 footer or it's going to kick very far right and there's even a chance that you're going to be in the hazard so as long as you've got the right distance I've always believed that to this pin position the left is definitely a better miss Next up, we have hole 4 which is an uphill par 4. For me, I've always found that this fairway is pretty difficult in terms of how it looks visually for me. This hole does kick from the left to the right and there is a bunker there down the right side that although it might seem pretty far right, for some reason the ball always tends to kick into that bunker and there have been many situations such as the one here where I felt like I've hit a good shot and I always walk up there and end up in the bunker. Like I said, I thought I hit a good shot but you know, ended up in the bunker again. So I ended up having just over 130 yards here and I wanted to hit an 8 iron and I felt like I could get this over the lip because I don't know, for some reason it did not look very high to me. But now looking back at it, it is pretty high so I definitely should have been going with less club. But in my opinion, the way I was looking at it, it's either I get on the green or I don't anyway. So might as well go for the club that I think is going to reach the green. <laughs> I was like, it's gonna like come backwards. <laughs> oh my god, that video will be funny. <laughs> so obviously I made a mistake there, but like I said, you know, it's either I made the green or I didn't. Right now, since this is my third shot, the priority has to be to hit the green. So I'm just going for the center of the green here, not trying to be too cute. This green is not a very easy one to hit because of its elevation and it does slope uphill and then downhill. So to get this close to the pin, I knew was not going to be easy anyway. So I just wanted to make sure I hit a good shot that was going to get me a putt. So I did hit the green like I mentioned. Not very close but it is still a putt for par. You're always going to make a mistake during a round of golf. But I think that if you can make a mistake and still give yourself a chance to putt for par, maybe even make the par or at least walk away with a bogey, I think you're going to be doing pretty well. That's a super helpful thing to have on a tee box. All the carries of everything. Hole 5, a par 5. This hole is pretty short, definitely one that you can get on into. But the trick here is the tee shot is definitely not easy. I think one of the things you'll notice in Suri Selangor is accuracy of the tee definitely makes a huge difference. If you're hitting your driver well, this course is going to seem pretty easy. However, if you are not, it's going to be a lot more difficult. And that's one of the reasons why I think I love this course. It's one of those courses where you can literally shoot 69 one day and 79 the next, just depending on the bounces and kicks that you get. So normally from that tee box, I usually land it at the slope but I carried this drive a little bit further than normal so I ended up going past the cart path. Over here, I knew it was immediately a 3 shot hole. Just want to get it back out there in play to a good position. So after that punch out, like I said, this hole is not very long, so I was only left about 85 yards. The pin today was located on top of a slope, so I was just trying to get the ball on top of that, just to make sure that I give myself an easier putt than from the bottom of it. I think you can see clearer in this clip what I was talking about regarding the approach shot, but you can see how there is a slope in front of that green. And I feel like generally when there are slopes like that, it will definitely be easier if you get it over it or on top of it to the flatter area. Just so that you can 
focus solely on the line rather than having to focus on your speed and line because when there are slopes like that, it makes it so much harder to estimate the speed that you're going to have to putt at. Next up, we have hole 6 which is another par 5. This par 5 is reachable as well although it is playing completely uphill so it's definitely a little bit more challenging in terms of distance. However, for the hole itself, since there is no water hazard in play, I feel like it is more straightforward in that sense. So again, a good tee shot is definitely necessary here to give yourself a good position to go for the green in 2. After the tee shot, I had 219 yards, like I said, it's completely uphill so it's playing about 226. The second shot is definitely the trickier shot here. This entire hole slopes from the right to the left and as you can see, there is a bunch of trees on the right side. So in order to go for the green, I essentially have to hit this above that flat tree on the right side. It might not seem very high from here, however, in real life and with my 3 wood, I don't feel like I can confidently carry that tree very easily, especially because it's pretty close to the green, so I always feel like it's going to catch it on the way down. So I didn't have enough cut on the ball, so it ended up in this bunker. But like you can see, I'm just next to the green, so I always feel like even if I go for the green and end up in the bunker, I'm still giving myself a pretty good opportunity to at least try to get up and down for a birdie. Next up, we have hole 7 and I think you can tell just by looking at it, it's again another pretty tricky tee shot. So basically, the line here is just to be able to go right over that bunker that's on the left side of the fairway but like you can tell, it does not look the best visually. So I ended up hitting it too far right and usually when you hit it right, it's just going to bounce all the way into these trees. So I had an opening although it meant that I was not really going to be able to go for the pin. Again, just trying to advance this as close to the green as possible and try to make a par from wherever I end up. So I end up in the bunker which I knew there was a high chance of that happening because I could not go right of this pin and like you can see here left is bunker hitting a low shot from under the trees high chance is going to draw. So next up, after a good par save, we have this tricky little par 3. Not the easiest green again just because of the undulations of the green, but also not too long so definitely still very accessible. Today I'm hitting a 7 iron, it's playing 155 and the pin is all the way behind. So again, trying to get it on top of the slope. Like I mentioned on the par 5, when the pin is on top of a slope, it's always best to try to make sure that your distance control is good just so that you can give yourself a flatter putt and only have to worry about the line rather than the line and the speed. Always nice to have a little birdie, especially towards the end of a 9. Next up, we have hole 9, which is a par 4. 
A good tee shot is necessary because on the right side there is a bunker and if you hit it down the right side, your distance will definitely be reduced significantly because you're not going to get any run off that the bunker and this hole becomes a lot more difficult and clearly there isn't a miss on the left side because you are going to be deep in the jungle. So the reason why I said if you hit it in the bunker, your distance will be reduced significantly is because as you can see here, if you hit it down the fairway, there's a lot of downhill slopes that bounces the ball forward. I don't know how I ended up stopping on one of the slopes. So this was definitely a very interesting lie. The ball almost never stops on here. I think I just caught a weird patch of grass, but you just gotta play as it lies. I still ended up giving myself a putt on the green, but definitely a lot over. I knew that with that lie, there was no way that ball was going to stop. So over here, just really focusing on getting a good speed. Just try to give myself a good two putt here and walk away. A one putt here would definitely be a bonus. So when you're faced with such a long putt, just focus on your speed. As long as your speed is right, you generally won't give yourself that difficult of a second putt.